Hi everyone, I'm Gordon and in this video I'm going to show you how to fix a joystick on a Vectrex controller. Yes, the Vectrex, arguably the best games console from the early 80s. Certainly one of the most unique with a built-in Vectorscope CRT monitor. Who needs pixels and jagged diagonals when you can have perfectly straight lines or intensely bright dots, right? Not me. Trouble is, the standard Vectrex controller has a common problem. The two springs that keep the joystick centered on each axis can sometimes snap, causing the stick to flop about. Happens to the best of us as we get on. Now you can still play the games, but they become much tougher, especially when your character's position or motion demands absolute precision, but now finds itself drifting helplessly into an obstacle. Surprisingly, it's the spring on the vertical axis which seems to break first. Not only is a droopy joystick a telltale sign on secondhand Vectrex listings to watch out for, but it's exactly what happened to my own controller almost 40 years ago. I remember opening it up to an attempt to repair in my teens, but gave up as I didn't have the right part to replace it, and most of my favourite games actually remained reasonably playable with just a left-right action. Then I'm sad to say the distractions of newer computers, a university degree and full-time employment saw my Vectrex packed away for a long time. Four decades later, I unpacked it once more to explore favourites from the 80s, along with what's become a flourishing homebrew scene, and I'll be making videos about both new and old games very soon. Amazingly, it actually powered up without a hitch, but that floppy joystick continued to taunt me, so I decided to do something about it, and I'm relieved to say that the fix only cost me a few pounds and took less than 15 minutes. So if you're suffering from unwanted drooping, I've got the solution for you. First, you'll need a new spring, and the Vectrex joystick uses a pair of these, roughly half an inch or 12 millimeter long. Something similar could actually be found in some old Atari VCS cartridges, and for a while, these were the go-to source for spares that could be trimmed down to size. But today, the retro community is sufficiently mature for dedicated spares to be available. Console5.com in the US sells pairs of replacement springs for just 99 cents. Or if you're in the UK and want them a bit quicker, they're typically available on eBay for around five pounds, which is how I got mine. The Vectrex controller is held together by five Phillips head screws in the top panel, hidden below a sticker overlay, which you'll first need to remove. Unfortunately, peeling this off without damaging it is almost impossible, although some enthusiasts advocate warming it first with a hairdryer to soften the glue. I peeled mine off in the 80s and it's long gone, so at least I didn't have that particular dilemma this time round. Unlike the 80s, the retro community now has you covered for replacement panels too. Console5.com sells controller overlay stickers for around $13 in either GCE or MB branded versions, or again there's eBay sellers if you're outside the US and want them faster. With the sticker peeled off, you can remove the five Phillips screws from the top of the controller and separate the two halves. Inside the upper section, you'll see the back of the circuit board for the buttons and the joystick held in a plastic cage that itself is held in place by four more Phillips screws that should be removed for easier access. Each axis of the joystick turns a potentiometer back and forth, while a spring on the inside returns it to a central position. You may be able to just see the two legs from one of the springs poking out under three soldered wires on the potentiometer, while on the damaged axis, there's no evidence of any spring. If this is the first time you've opened your controller, the broken spring parts may have fallen into the shell or some of it may still actually be inside the mechanism. You're going to have to open it up either way, but it's easier than it looks. First you'll need to remove the outer brown circuit board of the potentiometer from the damaged axis. This is held in place by four small metal tabs that are simply bent over it, so gently prise them open with a thin screwdriver head until you can remove the board. I actually only had to open three of them on mine to access it. With the board removed, you'll see a white plastic nut over the joystick axle. The spring goes on the other side of this, so you'll need to gently coax this off the axle. Again, I found a thin-headed screwdriver did the trick. Turn this plastic part around and you'll see how the spring clips into it. First, rest the circular part of the spring over the central part, then squeeze the legs together until you can push them below the two small tabs. The legs should now be pointing up towards the small semicircular notch on the plastic nut. At this point, with the potentiometer disassembled, you should really take the opportunity to wipe the metal contacts with some clean alcohol on a cotton wool bud or q-tip. 
Next, put it all back together by sliding the plastic nut back over the axle with the spring side going in first. Then gently push the brown board back under those metal tabs, ensuring that the wiring is on the same side as the other half of the joystick. Then push those tabs back down to hold it in place. And that's one axis fixed and good to go. If you wiggle the joystick, you may notice that one axis is now looser or stiffer than the other due to the different spring that's springing it back. At this point, even if the other axis is working, you may want to replace the other spring for consistency as well as longevity, especially if you intend to apply a sticker over the case screws and hopefully not have to open it again for a long time. Now, I initially ummed and ahed about this, but went back and fitted a second spring as a preemptive measure. Plus, it allowed me to clean the electronics and mechanics on both axes. Once you're done with the joystick repairs, screw the cage back into the casing, then test your work on your console before screwing the main controller case back together again. At this point, it should be safe to apply your old or replacement sticker to the surface, cleaning it first to remove any glue. Here's how mine now looks with a sticker ordered from eBay that roughly matches the Milton Bradley branding on the rest of my console. Once again, the entire process took less than 15 minutes and the spring and sticker came in at under £20 delivered, which is a lot cheaper than these original controllers often sell for second hand. And that's if you can even find one for sale. If you don't fancy doing a repair yourself or perhaps never got on with that tiny joystick on the original controller, there's a wealth of alternative controllers that you could buy from various suppliers or enthusiasts. I'd highly recommend joining the Vetrex Fans Unite group on Facebook as there's loads of great advice on there from an active, friendly and very supportive community. I'll see you on there. I hope you found that useful. I'm delighted to finally have my Vetrex controller feeling like it did when I first unpacked it in my early teens. Let me know if you owned or played this console and if you'd like to see more videos about it or indeed other systems in the future because I really enjoy making them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.